Thanks, Christine, for that update from around the world. Well, we're joined now by Pete Wilson. Pete serves as the senior pastor and founder of Cross Point Church in Nashville, Tennessee. You may remember him as the author of the book Plan B, as he was here a while back with the Full Circle Ladies on the couch. Well, he survived that experience and he has returned with his newest book, Empty Promises, the truth about you, your desires, and the lies you're believing. Pete, welcome back. <laughs> uh, it's good to be back. Thank you so much. Yeah, great to have you. Well, you did survive that event. And maybe this is a little less threatening <laughs> than a bunch of ladies on a couch. I'm telling you, this is so <laughs> less threatening. <laughs> it really is. By the way, if anyone wants to see that interview on the, on the couch, go to 100huntley.com and you can just type in Pete Wilson. You'll, you'll find it. It was some good stuff on, on that. But uh, I, you've also got a lot of good stuff that you've uh, come up with here in the Empty Promises book. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But your, your church you, you founded is one of the fastest growing in the U.S. right now. Wow. And uh, how do you account for that kind of growth? explosion really you know I don't like uh, we people often ask is there a secret or you got you know there's really not you know I think that we're just experiencing uh, God's favor and God's grace and I pray we never forget that it really is about his favor and his grace on mm -hmm. our church and uh, we're just enjoying a really exciting season these yeah. days good stuff well empty promises what what's the, um, the real central idea in yeah. this book well, the central idea is that, you know, we all have these things that we chase after. Our culture has basically said, you know, we, we grew up in this culture that said, hey, you know what, if you could have a certain level of success, if you could make a certain amount of money, uh, if you could get a, a certain amount of popularity among your friends, you know, if you did certain things that you would make it, that you would feel a sense of peace, a sense of accomplishment or value or worth. And so most of us have spent our lives now, you know, we've gotten the jobs, uh, we're married, we have mm -hmm. kids, we've, we've done everything that culture has said, you need to do this in order to feel successful. And yet what I found is that so many people still feel so empty inside. And the reality is we've turned to these things, these empty promises that our culture offers us, and it's just left us feeling exhausted and lifeless. Mm -hmm. Because in a sense, what we've been doing is exactly what was the story of the Bible. We're chasing after things other than God mm -hmm. to give us a meaning and a purpose that we can only find in God. Yeah. Well, you, you say that we're all wired to worship. And why is that significant in the light of this topic? Well, I think it's significant because so many of the, the things that make us chase after money or accomplishment or acceptance are actually God-given desires. Right? You, your heart has a desire for worth and acceptance and love and significance. These are, these are God-given you know, pieces of what it means to be a human being. And so you're made to worship and everybody worships something. You know, some people will say, well, I'm not really a worshiper. Yeah, you are. Everybody's a worshiper. Uh, we are designed to worship. Our heart has to worship something. And the reality is that if you worship anything other than God who you were created to worship, your life is going to feel empty. And so this book is all about how, how do we identify these things in our life that we're looking to, to give us something that only God can give us. And then how can we relinquish those things and replace them with the things our heart was really created for? Mm. Now, when people think of, of worshiping and they, they think of idols, uh, it's usually, you know, in some pagan temple and, yep. and, you know, some strange form. But you suggest that there's a form of idolatry that we all struggle with. Absolutely. What do you mean by that? Well, I define idolatry this way in the book. I say it's anything that you look to to give you what only God can give you. So when you think about it that way, it really broadens it. You know, mm -hmm. I was in India a couple of years ago and was watching different forms of idolatry play out in some of their temples. And I remember watching some of this stuff and thinking, you know, how ridiculous that they think if they sacrifice that animal that it's going to bring some kind of peace to their family. Mm -hmm. But I remember on the bus ride back thinking, um, you know what is equally as ridiculous? Me thinking if I make more money next year than I did this year, that somehow that's gonna bring me some peace. Mm. And what I started to realize is that we all have idols. There, all of us have these things that we look to to give mm. us what only God can give us. The question is, have you identified those things in your life? 
That's that's so true. You know, when when you think about it, <laughs> that's that hits right on the mark. I yeah. think with uh, pretty much everyone can relate to that. Yeah. Uh, C.S. Lewis he wrote this, and this is a quote from your your book that you have quoting C.S. Lewis. Most people, if they had really learned to look into their own hearts, would know that they do want and want acutely something that cannot be had in this world. There are all sorts of things in this world that offer it to give it to you, but they never quite keep their promise. Mm. That's uh, those, those empty promises that, yep. that we often buy into. So, so what are some of those empty promises then? You kind of mentioned a, a few in, yep. in passing. Maybe we can just step into a, yeah. a few of those. I'll tell you the one I struggle with the most, and it's acceptance. Mm. Most of my life, I have looked to the acceptance of other people to define my worth. Mm. And so whenever, for instance, I could get 100 emails telling me I was doing a great job, have a great ministry, and there'd be that one negative email. And when I'd get that email, I would read it and reread it and almost memorize it. You know, I would obsess on that one thing because to me, I was gathering my self-worth externally from the approval of other people. Now, the problem with that is there's always going to be somebody out there who doesn't like you or approve of you for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I say this, um, trying to gather your self-worth externally is like trying to fill up a lake with a Dixie cup. It's just never enough. You know, there's not enough achievement. There's not enough acceptance from other people. Uh, it's just never enough. And I tell you, one of the things that this really hit me a couple months ago, I was watching a part of Whitney Houston's funeral. And during her funeral, there was an actor uh, that was speaking, Kevin Costner. Mm -hmm. And he said this about Whitney. He said, the Whitney I knew was still asking, am I beautiful enough? Am I talented enough? Will people like me? And he said, it's what's made her great and what in the end caused her to destruct. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that, that's so true. You know, and if Whitney Houston is still asking, am I talented enough? Am I pretty enough? You know, will people like me? Then everyone else is asking that as well. You know, because she had what so many people in our culture say, that's it, that, that's where you want to be in life. You want that kind of talent. You want that kind of popularity. You want that kind of money. And if you have that stuff, you're going to be satisfied. And yet here was a woman that was not satisfied at all. And so we see this play out in the media every day. These people who have everything our culture has told us to get, and yet they're still miserable, they're still empty, so there has to be more. And that's really what this book is about. What is that more yeah. that we're all searching for? So, and it's, it's not just the big, rich and famous people, it's the everyday person yep. that, that can struggle with that same empty promise of, of acceptance. You know, I, I'm not good enough. And so, I, how, how does someone just, on, on that item, how does someone just take a, a step toward the truth and, and get you know, the real promise. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the key is this. Regardless of what I'm looking to, whether it's acceptance, whether it's approval, whether it's achievement, whether it's money to define my self-worth, uh, whether it's a certain relationship, the love of another person, I have to remember I can't, I can't gather my self-worth externally. My self-worth, my value comes in the fact that I am a child of God, mm -hmm. right? What Jesus did on the cross is a statement of who I am. My worth and my value have to be defined there. If I try to define my purpose, my worth, my value through anything other than Jesus, it's just gonna grind me down and make me feel exhausted. And that, that's the real key, is beginning to discover that your heart was created to worship God and God alone. He's the only one that can fulfill the desires that your heart longs for. Interesting that you mentioned in one chapter that even religion mm. can be to some like an empty promise. What do you mean by yeah. that? Well, I think what happens often, I think about the prodigal son, right? He comes home to the father who represents God and his intentions are, I'm going to go to work for my father. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet his father throws him this party. And I have to imagine the son felt very uncomfortable in that moment. And I think that's us. We come home to God, we experience His grace, but our intention is, surely I have to work for this. I'm gonna to go to work for my Father. So I'm gonna engage in religion and I'm gonna jump through all the right hoops and make sure I say all the right things and I can earn God's love. When all the time God is just saying, no, 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 this is a gift, here's my grace, this is a party, come into the party. 
And we have a hard time with that. We know that God loves us because we feel like he kind of has to. But I think most of us still feel like God's still kind of disappointed in us. And uh, that's kind of what religion does. We have to get to this point where we begin to really receive God, his love and his grace for who he created us to be. You, you quote the book of Proverbs uh, toward the end of the book where 1412, Proverbs 1412, there's a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. Mm. That really speaks of the, the deception that, yeah. that people, the, the enemy out there is just is deceiving people with Absolutely. these empty promises. Um, perhaps just as we wrap things up here, you, you can take a moment maybe to, to talk to someone who's believing some empty promises, maybe even pray for them. Would you yeah, do that? I would love to. Uh, I, I think there's so many of us who really struggle with this, and maybe today it's you and you're exhausted because you're chasing after all the empty promises of this world. And I, I'd love to just pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, um, we just lift up all the viewers today who are struggling with this. We're reminded of Matthew 11 when Jesus just says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest for your soul. So God, maybe today you would just do that. To someone who is weary, to someone who is burdened, we pray, God, that you would just give them rest for their soul, that they would come to you, that they would fall at your feet, and that, God, you would meet the desires of their heart, as only you can, for it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 And I would encourage those watching right now, perhaps there's uh, something on your heart that's heavy or maybe saying, I I've been believing something. It it's a lie. It's an empty promise. I know it is. And you want to talk to someone. You want to have someone pray with you specifically about your need. Give us a call on our prayer line. You'll see it uh, on the screen from time to time, 1-866-273-4444. It's toll free. We'd love to share with you further about that and pray with you. All right. Well, Pete, your, your book, Empty Promises, we actually have something new since the last time you were on with us. We have an e-store. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and we have uh, available for a lot of our, the guests that, that come by, we uh, make available on our e-store, and this one is one of those. So if you um, would like to get your copy of Empty Promises, maybe there's someone that you want to buy it for. You're saying, I, I believe this would really uh, touch the heart of, of my friend, my family member. You can go online, either at crossroads.ca, and click on the e-store order it there, or you can call 1-800-265-3100 and, and purchase your copy. Empty Promises, the truth about you, your desires, and the lies you're believing. Pete, thanks so much for Thank coming you. our way, and keep up the great work there in Nashville. You bet. Thank you so much. Okay, God bless. Stay with us. Lots more to come.